So this is a unique and large, probably life-sized um, sculpture by Rembrandt Bugatti. And I know you all know a little bit about Bugatti. Um, so, and there's also, as you know, Bugatti in the Gilchrist Gallery. And you can kind of do a quick little history of uh, animal sculpture in there. And Bugatti, at, working in the early 1900s, um, sort of at the end of that, uh, that history in there, just like Kuhner, Rungus, and Frieza are, um, with this really intense way of really looking at the animal and then uh, giving you his uh, impression of it. He's more impressionistic. People have even, even said some of his sculptures are futuristic. Um, some of them use more angular shapes. Um, but he really, building on the success of Rodin, introduced um, or continued to refine uh, impressionism as it's used in sculpture. So it makes perfect sense to bring that in here in modern movements because this is all about what was happening in the early 1900s and also um, a good comparison to uh, people. Some people like Rungus were going out into the wilderness and really studying animals there. Other people were going to the zoo, to the Jardin des Plantes, like Rousseau. Um, Paul Juve went and traveled all over, but he didn't necessarily go camping or go out in the wilderness. And Bugatti did not either. He, uh, stationed himself at the Antwerp Zoo. He had a very special relationship with these animals. Um, many people say that he found their company much more pleasant than the company of other humans. Um, so he was kind of reclusive. Um, and as you know, too, probably he committed suicide um, in 1916, uh, in part uh, due to World War I, in part due to the fact that they had to uh, put down all the animals in the zoo, and he really felt like the animals were his friends, and so bad feelings all around. But during his, yeah, <laughs> during his brief life, he created an amazing number of really high quality sculptures. This being one of them. Um, it took me, let me see what other little notes about this piece. Bring up there's, I think, that Rachel forwarded you a little um, info sheet about this sculpture. It is uh, one of a kind cast. Um, these are, uh, he called it my antelope. So they really were his friends, or he was very friendly towards them. Um, he, working at the Antwerp Zoo, these were Senegalese bushbuck, which is a sort of interesting fact. Um, he moved uh, his studio down to Paris, and he requested that these two animals be sent down to Paris and uh, be with him in his studio so that he could sculpt them. So that's, and then in this description, it's also pointed out that that's kind of a, if you really care about the animals, why would you do that? Because you know it's going to stress them out. And then eventually when he sent them back, the female died, and he felt really bad about that. Um, so that is a little bit about this. What I have often confused in my head, and in the way that some of these things, like this book is written, um, is that our little sculpture of two antelopes called the two friends are not the same as these two. And I thought they were. So sometimes when we were talking about our other sculpture, I said that these were his friends that he brought to Paris, etc. That is not this. These are Bushbuck, and they have a little. Here. This is a nice photo I found this morning. Um, that's a photo of what they look like. And what's really interesting is once I saw that, and once we put a light on here, if you look really closely, he's made an effort to really lightly uh, indicate those lines that they have on. Um, on the side of their bodies. And if you compare those to, this is our little sculpture, they're not the same uh, creatures. So, so, also, we, which two, like, so which two went to Paris? These, these two, two went to Paris. These two, yep. okay. And also mostly because look at this one has horns. <laughs> these do not. So, um, <laughs> These, which are ours, our small 
uh, casting of the two friends, Les Deux, Les Deux Amis, uh, is also from 1911. This is from 1908. Um, and once you start really looking at it, they are very different creatures. Um, these are uh, young kudu uh, antelope, not Senegalese bushmen. So I learned something uh, new, and I was happy uh, to do that. Uh, thanks to these coming here. These I saw at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles. They had a big Bugatti exhibit that had Bugatti cars, Bugatti sculptures, and then the father of those two was a furniture maker. So he made really interesting furniture. One son did sculpture, one son started the car company that we're, most of us are familiar with today. Um, there's one Bugatti automobile uh, historic that has an elephant hood ornament that Rembrandt Bugatti sculpted. Um, anything, any other questions? And these are on loan from where? These For are how on loan from a private collection that calls itself uh, National Arts Program, but there is it's a, some private. Uh -huh. And so how long do you think we'll have? We it? will have this through the summer. Okay. Then they're going to go to New York and be in a show of again cars, sculpture, yeah. and furniture. Nice. And in the future, I really want to try to get a similar kind of thing here because yeah. I think people would really love to see that combo yeah. of things. So one of my biggest. Uh, Issues is logistical in that how would we get a car in here? Uh, it might be possible to get it into Johnston Hall, yeah. but I think getting a car in here would be almost impossible. So we'll try to figure that out. Take it apart, put it back. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> put it on the side. Okay. Teenage. Put it down. You're talking about a human-driven car as a threatened species that's going to be extinct? Yeah. Yep, the Bugatti. When I was at the Peterson, they had a mini Bugatti that had been made for a child. That I was like, oh, we can get that. It. Oh, that's Easy. perfect. It's less, less impactful than an actual enormous Bugatti. So we'll see what we can do. And it would be just fun to talk about them as an artistic family. He's really regarded as the, the greatest animalier sculpture, sculptor who ever lived. Um, so it'd be nice to show the work of the father. And him. Yeah. So any other questions?